Live are all podcasts available. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. We all over the place, baby. Y'all know what time it is. It's that See Me Thursday on FanView Live. We sit down, we talk about the world of sports and what's going on. We got so much to get into. The Lakers are out of the playoff G Sports. Mm. Got to talk about them. Mm. Got to talk about them. Mm. We got Zion step, step Daddy on podcast having conversations. Got to talk about it. Final Four recap. My Blue Devils oh. came up short. Oh. Got to talk about oh. it. Got to talk about oh. it. We got Saints talk, y'all. Y'all already know what the time I did. We got Saints. We got Saints making moves G Sports. Moving up in the first round. Getting an additional pick in the first round. We got to talk about so much to get into. LSU spring practices. Brian Kelly, we, we, we got we to talk about you. New era. New era. New era. Got to talk about the new era. But to start this show off right, we got a New Orleans native. St. All graduate. Young man played four years at the University of Texas. Was in the G League for a few years. They came down and went to coaching. First year coaching as an assistant. They win the natty, baby. They win the natty. That's a hell of a way to start your career. Hell of a way to start your career. For anybody that don't know who I'm talking about, it's assistant coach at Loyola of New Orleans, Javon Felix. It's going to be our guest call of the day on FanView Live. Y'all been tuning in. Y'all been waiting for it. Here it is. Coach Javon, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? We can hear you a little bit. We can hear you a little bit in our area. Producer, if we can get him loud up a little bit. We can, we, can, we, we can hear you, though. How you making out, man? All good. Man, I'm making out good, man. You know, just enjoying this, uh, the residuals of winning the national championship. <laughs> <laughs> Javon, man, it's G Sports here, man. Appreciate you coming on FanView, man. Uh, man, just talk about, you know, getting hired in August and, and, and going through Hurricane Ida, man, uh, not being able to practice in y'all facilities like y'all wanted to and just a lot of – just a big roller coaster throughout the right. throughout the season. Right. And uh, being able to go 37-1 and and win the first natty, you know, since 1945 at Loyola, man. Well, first of all, Thank you guys for having me on here. I appreciate it. Appreciate it's it. Definitely a privilege and honor. I appreciate y'all. Um, but I mean, man, starting off in August, so it all kind of happened fast for me. Um, I was getting ready. I was training to go play last summer. Um, I was about to go back overseas, uh, uh, and then I pretty much found out I had a blood clot, so it's cut my playing career short. Right. Um, so I went from that, um, by the grace of God, got an amazing offer from Coach right. Stacy here at Loyola um, for me to come and coach here um, and start off my coaching career. It's always been something I wanted to do when I got done. Always been something that um, I've tried to keep a close hand in. Um, this, and, and honestly, this is my third year. I have a, a, a seventh grade AAU team. So I've been, I mean, I've been trying to get back to the community for a minute. Um, train kids as well. Like I, I just try to keep my hand into it. Um, but but this year it was it was definitely a big time opportunity. Something that I felt like I couldn't pass up. Right. Um, coming in, coming into a great program. Coming into a, um, you know a team with with some great talent and just be able to come in and, and put my two cents in and try to uh, you know help us reach some some of the goals that I know we were going to set at the beginning of the year. Um, that was definitely a big time for me, but. As far as going through all the adversity we went through, it was crazy. Hurricane <laughs> took, our, took our gym away from us. Yeah. Right. So we had to we had to go to Dallas for two weeks and practice to start the season. Then we left Dallas, came back home, still couldn't practice in our gym. We uh we were practicing Xavier's Rec Center six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> uh, we did that for like a month and a half. So really, the first. The beginning of the season, we was practicing every day at 6 a.m. Yep. Right. Um, so then shout out to Tulane. Tulane started showing us some love. So we started being able to go into their practice facility after everybody got done in there. So, they, so it turned from 6 in the morning to 
6.30 at night. So we would start practice at 6.30. So Tulane gets a title, too. They get, they get, they get, they get one of the trophy case, too. <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> but, uh... So, yeah, so... But, but they helped us out for the most part. Um... Then we, you know, we, everybody dealt with COVID. That's yep. right. It's just a part of our life right now. Yep. Um, we, we we went down with COVID for a little while, which is actually, and and no disrespect to Faulkner University, the people who we lost to, but going into that game, we had eight, eight guys plus both coaches, me and Coach Stacy, out with COVID. So right, we have a practice going into that game, and uh. So we, I mean, we lost that game, unfortunately. But you know, I think it was good for us to, to show us what that taste of losing looked like and yep. feel like um, what can happen if we don't come out there prepared and ready to go. Um, so yeah. we end up av- avenging that loss by fifty-two. The next time we yep. saw them, we played them. Yep, <laughs> we beat them by fifty-two. The um, so we, we try to make, <laughs> we try to make a statement with that. Um, then from there, man, we whole bunch of different things happened. So we were getting ready to play a game. I believe we were at Talladega. Uh, we were sitting in the stairwell for an hour because of a um, uh, tornado was less than a mile away from us. Wow. We past our hotel. Y'all got all kind of obstacles, man. Y'all got hurricanes. Y'all got tornadoes, man. Y'all got it all dip up around here, man. You know, you, you, man, you know, you, all you need is a tsunami, man. We, 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 we put a real plaque up there. <laughs> Crazy, right? So, so cool. So that I mean, we got through that. Got to the gym late. Was able to to, to just adjust and, and you know fix it on the fly. And we was able to be prepared enough get get ready for that game going there and do our thing. Um, then we played. We got to the national tournament. Um, we, we made it to the Sweet Sixteen. Handled business at home. We hosted the opening rounds and uh, at Tulane. Shout out to them again. Um, <laughs> I told you, man. They need a trophy, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so we left there, uh, went to Kansas City. We got to Kansas City, played the first game, which was the Sweet 16 against Faulkner University again. Yep. Um, so we beat them in the Sweet 16, and then after that game, everything went crazy. Um, we had six guys on our team with food poisoning or a stomach bug, whatever you want to call it. Somebody tried to Michael Jordan us. <laughs> <laughs> but we actually had guys. We actually had guys in the, hospital in the ER. Wow. Uh, throughout a couple uh, throughout a couple nights and I had to go sit in there with him um just to try to make sure you know everything was straight with that. So we fought through that in the final four pretty much. Um guys getting IVs before the game. Uh we in the hotel room scrambling just making sure guys got pedia light. <laughs> had to make store runs, go and buy 50 pedia lights off the off the shelves at Walmart. All you need is power, yeah, baby. Oh yeah, we. I mean, that wasn't working at first. Oh, <laughs> I, thought, I, I thought I thought we could give them that blue power and let them go about their business, but they ain't working at first, right? <laughs> so we had to make it shake. But I mean, all in all, it was it was good for us. We we just came closer through all that adversity, and um, you know, did our thing for the most part. I got I got a question, man. It's just Fred. What did you think was different? Well, you about you a ball player, right? Yeah. You know, so when you finally get into coaching, what did you discover that is actually different than what you probably envisioned as being a player? You know, you play the game of basketball and you've been coached by people and you finally became a coach. What did you discover that is actually something that you probably thought as a player but didn't really think was true, but you found out as a coach that you say, you know what, I ain't think coaching was like this. <laughs> so – as a player, when you're getting prepared for a season, game, practice, whatever, you you getting yourself ready, your mind. Like, you only you. Your mind, body, and soul, you getting yourself ready for um, whatever it may be, practice, a game, a scrimmage, whatever. Right. Even, even like, traveling for a, a, a game or getting ready to travel. Like, as a coach, and then especially on a two-man staff, it was only me and Coach Stacy. Right. So, um for me getting prepared for everything was was different just making sure that every single guy had the answers to the test going into 
a game or practice or something like that. Making sure that the way I would prepare as a player, making sure that I'm translating that to one through seventeen, one through eighteen. You know what I'm saying? So right. Uh, just trying to just trying to kind of enhance their preparation and teach them what it would be like from the eyes of a pro. You know, like uh, I've I've been fortunate enough to have some great mentors and some great people who have helped me out along the way yep. and taught me that, um, you know, how to prepare and how to just live through my work, you know, and, and right. make it easy on you know, myself. So um, doing that for, for 18 different guys um, was, was a task, but it was definitely worth it. Javon, man, I, I want to go back to November. Uh, I forget the date when you guys played UNO. Um, Yep. You know, I knew UNO was a pretty good team coming into this season. Uh, last year, you know, people found out I thought they was going to be that good this year, but they dealt with a lot of injuries. And this year, I knew right. it was going to be healthy. You know, they had a, a player of the year candidate in St. Alaire. And, you know, they played for the Southland Conference, Conference. Championship this year. Mm-hmm. And yep. when you guys beat them, you know, I think y'all was down, with 16 at one point in that game? And then you came back. I think yep. y'all went on like a 16, 17, nothing run or something like that. Ended up winning the game by like four or five points. But I thought when I, when y'all beat UNO uh, with the size and the talent that they have on that team, I knew y'all was going to have a good season. Not going to sit there and say, I thought y'all going to win the Natty, <laughs> but I knew y'all was going to be a good team and have and make a run this year. When y'all beat UNO, what did that tell you and Coach Stacy about y'all players? Uh, it, it just told us, uh, it told us a lot about the mindset of our players and how they wanted to – attack the rest of the season. They wanted that to be a statement game. Um, and especially our players got win or found out on Twitter some kind of way that UNO posted before that game that that was going to be their homecoming. So they felt disrespected <laughs> that they chose us to. to uh, getting and, greasy. And, and, uh, and their, their, their Twitter page tweeted out some along the lines of dress rehearsal or something like that. So, oh, wow. Um, the disrespect. A lot of, a lot yes, of bullets uh, board material. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, and, and me and Coach Stacy, we didn't we didn't talk none about none about none of that. Um, you know, we just more so focused on stuff that we felt like we can control. Mm-hmm. But our guys definitely took notice to that, and 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 like I said earlier, I think that was another part of the season that helped them come together and um, be goal oriented throughout the whole team. You know, to try to really just go in and ruin their day. Yeah, yep. we were able to do it. I got a question for you, Coach Javon. Listen, sometimes when you 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 have so much success early on as as a first time head coach, um, sometimes it's hard to figure out how to learn, how to be get better, because you come in with instant success, instant achievement. What is some of the things that you think that you want to do and become as a coach that you probably couldn't really able to do because you know you're winning? But what thing? What are some of the things you think you could work on and make yourself even a better coach and Loyola can have a better season coming up next year? Uh, I would just say um, the more detail-oriented you can be, the better. The more organized you can be in as far as your approach, how you prepare, how you watch film, um, and, and even how you teach on the court. I think all of those things, um, you know, sprinkling in a little bit more attention to detail would just take help me take my coaching game to a new level, um, you know, as a player, you always look at different ways you can get better and how you can improve each off season. And uh, I feel like taking the same approach as a coach, I think that's uh, vital for not only your growth, but the growth of the program and, and more importantly, the players. So um, it's, 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 as detailed as I, I, I like to think I was this year, I, I think that I can be better. And I think that, um, you know, right. being able to study, being able to study some of the, the greats in this profession is definitely something that, that I think goes without saying that I feel like you have to do. Um, you know, to be great, you got to study the ones that are great. So, uh, and I definitely hold myself to that standard. I don't want to be nothing less than um, great. Or, and, and at some point, I, I really won't see myself in the Hall of Fame. So, uh, <laughs> trophy of his own. Right. Sure. Like Coach K, <laughs> not Patino. Go ahead. <laughs> right. um, Javon, man, we, we living in some different times. 
as it pertains to college sports. You know, when you was coming out with St. Aug and going to, and you was at University of Texas, there was no transfer portal. Right. Uh, it, you know, this has changed the <laughs> landscape of everything. You know, when you got players in your team like Brandon Davis, who I'm very, very fond of because I covered him in high school at East St. John. I thought he was very, very underrated coming out of high school. You know, people like Miles Burns and the rest of those guys. Trying to hold on to your current players as well as recruiting high school kids or JUCO kids that come in for the following year, how much of a task has that been? Has that is that going to be for you guys going forward when you have a when you have success like that? Uh, huge task, huge huge task. Um, I mean, honestly, it's kind of been a task since we beat UNO. Mm-hmm. Um, people have taken notice. I mean, when you have mm-hmm. this kind of level of success, people take notice and people understand. Um, you know that this doesn't just happen you know overnight like this right this comes with a lot of work that has been put in a lot of good habits a lot of you know uh consistency in your routine stuff like that so all of that kind of stuff goes into winning so people look at that and, and try to see how it can fit their program whether yep. that be a uh, professional d1 um you know whatever so um i mean at the end of the day it's about helping the kid get in the best position possible for them to reach their ultimate goal. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and honestly and truly to me, if, if we coming off a season like that, and if we can have guys who are, uh, who worked their way and got, you know, good enough opportunity to where they can go play D one basketball and, and go play in front of, um, other resources and, and bigger crowds and, right. and, you know, a bigger stage, if that's something that, you know that they have a really good chance of doing it, and they want to pursue it. Then, by all means, yep. You know man, I mean? Coach, I'm D one. I'm like that. You know, you had a conversation coming. I'm D one. I'm like that. Look at my Twitter feed. <laughs> you, you like G spec? Like G said, it's a different age, man. You know, every kid think they D one. Every kid think they like that. You yep. know, and so, sure. man, that's a heck of a task that you're gonna have after having success. Nah, definitely, <laughs> well, definitely. But one thing about it, though, one thing about that film, don't lie. Yep. <laughs> Yep. I noticed in the press conference, they asked Miles Burns, you know, was he coming back next year? He said, no comment. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like oh. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. You know Look. what I'm saying? But like you say, Javon, man, I mean, when you have that kind of level of success, yes. and, and Miles had a, had a hell of a year. I mean, he was one of my favorite players um, to watch this this past season and all of college basketball, D1, whatever. Absolutely. Um, just yeah. just the way he approached the game, man, the way he felt the stat sheet up. Um, but sure. you right. know, he, he deserves everything that's coming to him. Yep, and, and, and to piggyback off that, today, actually, Miles just got uh, named, I forget the name of the award, but it was the most steals in college basketball. Yep, yep, yeah. Of, yep, any, I've seen that. Regardless of any level, um, D1, D2, D3, NAIA, and JUCO, um, with 162 steals, yep. which is, that's like big time. Yep. See, Coach, I'm – do have uh, triple doubles this year with steals. Yep. Listen, listen, yep. listen yep. Coach, Coach, I'm like that. Patrick Beverly, Ron Ortiz ain't got nothing on me. I'm trying to get to the league. I'm like that. And I, I'm trying to tell you. That's how they, I'm telling you. They're watching the defensive players. Look, I'm out you. I'm out you. <laughs> Javon, man, I, I kind of want to go back, man, to, to when you was coming out of high school, man. I followed you. Yeah. You know, this is before I even started my media company. You know, that's when I was – you know, I've always been a sports junkie and – you know, I remember coming and watch them St. Aug teams, man, with you and Craig Victor, them guys, man. Y'all had a special group. Even though I think y'all underachieved your senior. No, we definitely did. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, they underachieved. You know, we I, definitely I, did. We, yeah. lost, we lost in that state championship game. But yes. I was hurt. I ain't going to lie. I'm not I, know it, I know it. I know it. I know it. I know it. But, you know, a 70, a 70% Javon Felix is better than a lot of people's 100% back then. This is true. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, I, I may or may not have been 70%, though. <laughs> Damn, I had a I had a fractured ankle and yeah. uh, uh bone bruising in my knee. Yep, yeah, I knew it was something with your leg. Was my, that was my last state. That was my last game in high school. I couldn't sit out. Yep, yep. Um, but just going back to high school, man. Uh, and and going through your recruiting process, and I always like to ask these kind of questions to to form to coaches and former players that was highly touted because recruiting. Is, is so much different than it was when I was coming out and even when you came out, even though that was like, you know, 10 years ago. Absolutely. Right. Uh, 
when you chose the University of Texas, I know a lot of people gave you some flack about not trying to pursue your talents to LSU. But I know you and Rick Barnes had a special relationship, and that was your dream school coming out of high school. I know DJ Augustine Absolutely. was somebody that kind of set the paved the way for right. you to kind of like, hey, I think yeah. Texas might be a school that, that might be a good fit for me. Uh, talk Absolutely. about your process, man, and, and what went into that decision, and how did you deal with, you know, all the naysayers that said you should have chose LSU yeah. and you should have chose this school and that school? Um, so first and foremost, um, I fell in love with Texas when – they came down here and played in the final four against Syracuse against Carmelo Anthony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I followed them that year because TJ Ford was the best point guard. Point guard. That was, listen, Javon, yeah. that was my, <laughs> listen, I wore number 11 in high school. Had the breeze, like, TJ, that was my yeah. favorite player when I was in high school. <laughs> favorite player, hands down. For sure. So, so TJ Ford was, was kind of somebody who opened my eyes to college basketball, even though I was young at the time. Yep. But seeing him do his thing and being smaller than everybody, yep. having that confidence, yeah. having that swag, just playing, just playing with no worries. I thought that was that was something that uh, was very intriguing to me, especially. I mean, at, at that age, I was just not really starting to take basketball serious, getting to. And that was an Emerald College so, basketball, bro. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yep. So, so that was that was. Uh, that's how it started, right? So um, then growing up in the city, watching DJ, seeing all the noise he was making, all the people he was killing. So um, seeing DJ, seeing Tweety Carter. Yep. I watched Tweety Carter play in the um, – it was the, the New Orleans Arena at the time, at the Smoothie King Center. They played against uh, Brother Martin and DJ, and yep. they just went at it for, for like, three quarters in a row. <laughs> like, they just went at it. So um, – so seeing that level of basketball motivated me to have people come out and see me like that when I was in high school. That was always one of my goals. Um, then once I got to high school, uh, well, I got to St. Aug in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. um, and I had no clue, no idea how I was going to make a name for myself when I first got there. I seen a lot of different people who I thought were like great athletes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so... I just I just put my head down and start working. Uh, I didn't want to be the because I, I grew up at playing at Stallings Park, mm -hmm. and I never wanted to be that little dude that they was like, "Oh, y'all just let him play. Come on, there. like y'all could just let him on the court, you right? Pick, put him on your team, right? No, I <laughs> no. won't be that. I'll be want to be one of them dudes that be like, "Oh no, we got him." Yeah, right. Like so, right. Uh, so that I mean, it just kind of reminded me of that. Like when I was once once I made it to eighth grade, I was able to start. Um, practicing against the varsity. They would use me as they scout team um, sometimes, and I just try to beat their head, and I would try to kill them every time. Um, so, I mean, I, that helped me just playing against them older dudes all the time. Um, and then around that time, DJ was in college at Texas. Mm -hmm. So studying the game was something that I know I had to do if I wanted to just keep getting better. Mm -hmm. So different guards that I, that I found – um, were big time with like Darren Williams, Chris Paul, yep, right. uh, TJ Ford, DJ, um, all of those at the time. So those are dudes that I that I just love watching. Um, and then once I, you know, once I made a name for myself, got on varsity, started as a freshman, uh, started, you know, going throughout the city, playing, winning games. Um, I started to get some, you know, people start recruiting me. Uh, and at first, I didn't know how to deal with it. At first, I was just super excited seeing all these letters come to my house every day. Right. I just run home at the school. Um, sometimes they'll send the letters to the school. The people come bring them to me in homeroom in the morning. And I, that'd be dope. That'd just be all the yeah, motivation. Especially right. in front of your peers. Yes, indeed. Hey. <laughs> that'd be all the motivation I need, especially when uh, they'll come bring you the mail in homeroom and all my all my partners will be looking at me like, like, boy, you really you really got these people sending you. Right. And written like. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm like it that. Kind of like, right? <laughs> <laughs> like that. <laughs> like that. Yeah, so, yeah. So it was kind of a sense of not wanting to let them down, not wanting to let the people around me down, all the people that were supporting me. Um, you can say true. It's for the ladies. Hey, ladies, you know, you I'm going somewhere. No facts. Like, I mean, I'm going I mean, somewhere like that. <laughs> for sure. I mean, at that, especially at that age, 15, 16. Yeah. Like, yeah, you just come on. Yeah. So <laughs> D1 over um, here. Pay attention. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so um, that was 
that was a big part of it. Not wanting to let everybody down who was supporting me and helping me out through that process. Then uh, around that time, I got, I was able to start building a relationship with DJ. He kind of took me under his wing. Um, he came down here one time in a, in the off season. This was when he was with the Bobcats, and uh, one somebody somebody let me know that he was gonna be working out, and I had talked to him a few times on the phone before this. So man, I just hit him up like, man, look, I know you're working out tomorrow morning. I won't come through, and if if it's not too much, let me jump in some drills with you. And he was like, absolutely. And after we finish the drills, we're gonna play one on one, and I'm gonna try to kill you. Huh, bro? And that and that was all that was all I needed right there. I ain't, I was like, hey, you hey, know, I don't have nothing to lose. Yep. In the right. NBA. If I lose to him, then I'm gonna just get better. That's it. That's it. <laughs> so, so I mean, I so I went and um, he took a liking to me because uh, like he seen my aggression toward him. I I wasn't scared of him at all. I, I just wanted to try to beat him for real. Right. Um, I've always been competitive like that. That always drove me, but. Um, to see a, 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 you know, somebody you grew up watching, especially in high school, then you watch them in college and you watch them get drafted and go to the NBA. That was definitely somebody who um, I was gunning for, honestly. So uh, shortly after that, I was at a camp in uh, Waco, Texas. So we were actually at Baylor. It was like a, a junior All-American camp or something like that. Mm-hmm. And there was this uh, reporter. His name is Clark Francis. Mm -hmm. Still remember him to this day. I was having a pretty decent camp. And it was getting time to where it was. Uh, at the end of those camps, they used to, you know, pick a top 20 to play in uh, the All-Star game. Top 20 throughout the whole camp out of probably like 200. So I made it to the, to the All-Star game. And, um, you know, everything finished up at the camp. Did good. Everything was cool. We about to leave. And uh, he pulled me to the side. He was like, I think you're a really good player. But I think the highest level that you'll ever play is probably uh, NAIA basketball or JUCO. But but appreciate you for coming out. You know, you did your thing. <laughs> wow. And ever since then, ever since then, that, that, was, that was something that I had playing in my head for years. Um, all the way, all the way up until probably after my freshman year of college. Hey. I, I would think about him going into the gym. <laughs> he told me that, he told me I would never, he said his exact words were, um, you're, you're a really good player. Um, you got nice IQ, but I think your ceiling is NAIA basketball. I think that that'll be something that you can set your eyes on. That's exactly what he said. So that's, why, that, that's why he went to Austin, Texas. He wanted that reporter to come all around from Waco and come show him, listen, bro. <laughs> hey, remember you? you it's, it's, I'm in Austin. Yeah. But you was wrong about your story. I'm a coach in NIA. I ain't going to play. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, look. So, so, he played, so, so, he played in my head for a long time, for years. So, that was something that I always wanted to not, not necessarily prove him wrong, but prove myself right. Right. And all of the people that supported me. So, uh, that, was, that was a big part of it. And then, um, in my head, I saw. I just saw DJ Augustine leave New Orleans and go to the best conference in college basketball at the time, the Big Twelve. Yep. And I was like, well, if he could do it, ain't no way I can't do it. I just got to put the work in. Right. So I made that. I made that my number one goal to get to the best conference in college basketball. That was either going to be the ACC or the Big Twelve. And at the time, the ACC was was uh, they had a couple down years, and it was people was talking about leaving the conference and stuff it, like that. So, right. Right. Um. So I was now, mind you, he told me the, my my ceiling was NAI. Right. So, um, I went from my ceiling being NAI to going and start in the Big Twelve, best basketball conference. Yep. Um, that's as a freshman, as a freshman, straight out of St. O. <laughs> <laughs> so, but but before that, dealing with the all of the people, man, and all of the people who was mad at me when once I committed, um, that was kind of easy because. Those people weren't, those people weren't never, they were never there when I was trying to sit on the phone with these coaches and yeah, trying right. to figure out who was telling me the truth. And right. um, when when uh, I went on my, my visit to LSU and <laughs> the coach at the time to told me that um, coming in, I probably wasn't good enough to play in the SEC, like coming in, but right. I would develop into a really good college player. 
So um, those kind of things motivated me. And they just kept me kept me positive because I didn't really I wasn't really, never really worried about the people who was mad at me for going to LSU because it wasn't their life. Like they were right. just they just right. wanted to see me they, play there. They didn't want to see you play there. I had to go right. I had to go live there. I had to like, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and and I felt like being close to home like that, I feel like that would be a whole bunch of distractions. I was on a mission. I just I wanted to be as best as I could. And I think that staying close to home, I don't think I'd have been as focused. I, my last question for you is I'm going to keep it very short. Um, what's your message for somebody who played the game of basketball but always want to get into coaching? Um, what's your message to that person? We get a lot of people who tune into the show who are, you know, former, you know, former athletes, former players, but, you know, they may have want to dive into being a coach. But, you know, what would be your message to them, to for somebody that is, that's listening to the show? Um, what's your message on, on to them about, you know, how to become a coach and, you know, and things of that nature, if that, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so first I would say if you're getting into coaching for the money, then don't do it. Right. Don't do it. It's too many lives. It's too many people that you have an effect on um, consciously and unconsciously that if you're doing it for the money, you, I mean, it's, you're going to half-ass it. So if you're doing it just for the money, don't even, don't even worry about it. Don't even cheat yourself. And don't cheat the people around you because that's how you get people or uh, kids getting put in bad positions and getting bad advice. And it's just stunting the growth of the kids. So that's first and foremost. Secondly, um, if you're going to start, if you want to start coaching, I would say start at any level that you can. Because mm-hmm. at, at once you jump in, you'll soon realize that coaching is not about you. It's not, a, <sighs> coaching is not a selfish right. Um. Uh, it's not. It's just not a selfish pathway. Like you can't. Right. There's no way you can be selfish and be a coach. Like you just. It's not. You just not. You're not in it for that. Right. Um. So I would say start any way you can. I started coaching, uh, fourth and fifth graders. So that that's how I started. When I I just knew that at some point I want to do this at a high level. So I need to learn. I need to learn how to be patient. I need to learn how to communicate with anybody. I need right. to learn how to teach. The, I need to learn learn how to teach the game of basketball to a person who has never picked up a basketball before. Right, and and help them get better. And the feeling of seeing people apply the knowledge that you're given, yep, and having success at it, or seeing people um, who are really hungry and who are really thirsty for the knowledge that they believe you have, even if you don't believe you have it yourself. Um, I think that's I think that's why you get into coaching, for the the effect that you have on the younger generation and the yep. youth and the foundation that you can help them build. Um, that 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 they can take with them not only in sports but in life. In life. Like, I, I believe I'm a firm believer. Um, sports teach you a lot of a lot of character traits that you could take with you through life and and be successful in whatever you're doing and not only as a professional but as a human being as well yep yeah. uh javon man the, la- the last thing i want to ask you before we let you go what is your end game man um you know when it's all, all right. said and done what is your ultimate goal you know whether it's coaching or helping the youth or whatever it might be you know what is your end game so um ultimately for me uh <laughs> this is crazy I don't really talk about this much, but for me, so um, if you look in the Hall of Fame right now, the Naismith Hall of Fame, it's not too many people from New Orleans or not too many New Orleans coaches, prominent New Orleans coaches, Mm -hmm. if any at all. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to be, I want to be the guy from New Orleans who represents us in the Hall of Fame as a coach. Um, I also want to uh, have a facility here in the city mm-hmm. um, built like a multi-sports flex facility that uh, not only is teaching kids and the youth the fundamentals of, you know, sports or whatever their respective sport is, but um, giving, a, giving them a foundation to where they can stand on as far as like just being punctual and professional, stuff like that, like being on time, 
um, showing up for and doing stuff that you really need to do in order to get where you want to get stuff like that. So no just doubt. showing them like um, the how to be professional, how to go about their business the right way, how to handle stuff. Right. Um, just as as youth and as young adults, really, because um, that's the rap on our city and, and the youth coming from it here. Like we have all of the ability, natural talent in the world, whether that be whatever, sports, rapping, lawyers, whatever. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> right. But we're not professional. Right. We're not professional. We don't handle things the right way. And to try and uh, break that curse a little bit, I think that's um, something that is very possible for me. No doubt, man. No doubt, uh, man. Man, appreciate you for coming on, fam. You, Javon, man. I've been a big fan of you, man, since you was in high school. Uh, followed your career all through Texas, even the G League, man. And there's no doubt in my mind, man, you got a bright future ahead of you, man, in this coaching game, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep inspiring the youth. And uh, keep stay, stay big on your feet, man. Man, I appreciate y'all. And, and then once again, thank y'all for having me on. Um, I think it's big time what y'all doing. And, you know, whenever we can make this happen any other time, man, just let me know. No doubt. You no know doubt, we gotta get you back. You gotta get, get you back on in the future. Man, for sure. And tell the Saints sign Tyron, man. Stop for real, playing. man. Tell us not playing. <laughs> Look, man. We're about to talk man. about that, man. We're about, about to talk about that. Stop playing. Tell us not playing, man. We're about to talk about that. We're about to get into that. <laughs> And Zion too. What is he doing? What you waiting on, my boy? Man, Zion, his stepdad say he want to play. He, he waiting on the Pelicans. Play, man. Man, the Pelicans. Hey, look, his stepdaddy came out and clarified a lot the other day. So, look, we gonna hey, see it. Man. Look, don't be surprised if he just pop up in that play playing game. I don't just don't be surprised. Hey, now listen, before now before y'all let me go, let me just say this. Go I ahead. thought I thought it was real ironic. The Pelicans went on an eight game win streak. Two days later, we seen Zion doing between the leg dunks in practice. Right. Right. Before that, before that, he wasn't even in the city. He was in Portland. <laughs> he, he was, was Portland. in Portland rehabbing. Yeah. But his, but his, his stepdaddy, you know, just looking at that interview, yeah. his stepdaddy, I, I, you know, and I, I've, I've, I've had the, the opportunity of, um, meeting his stepdaddy a couple times on the, on the Adidas uh -huh. circuit and the right. Five Forty Eight in Vegas. Yeah, yeah. Seemed yeah. like a real genuine dude. I think on that interview, it was coming from a real genuine place. Um, I, I, I believe this is my personal opinion. I believe that. Zion and his stepdaddy wants him to play, but Griffinum is scared and because they're afraid he's going to hurt himself for the future. That's what I right. think is going on personally. And it, it, he didn't come out and say that, but if you watch the interview, you, you, you can read, can, you can the, read lines. the lines. That's what yeah, I got yeah, from yeah. you. Can read between the lines. Yeah, yeah, that's what I got. So, so <laughs> we'll see, though. <laughs> we will see. We will see. No doubt, Whew. man. Appreciate you, Javon, man. Got to get you back on in the future, man. Man, for sure. I appreciate y'all. Thanks again, man. Thank no, you. No, no problem, man. No, no problem. problem. All right. Man, listen.